Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it'll whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to talk about pH. It's going to be a bit long and math heavy though. So let's get started. There are a few basic equations and formulas you need to know if you want to work with pH. We have the standard pH formula turning a known hydrogen ion concentration, a molarity, and having the units mole per liter into pH, where pH equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. You'll notice it's in square brackets. Just know that it's typically asking you for something like a concentration. Then we have the inverse of that equation. When you know the pH and want to know the hydrogen ion concentration, you use the formula 10 to the power of negative pH. Then we have the formula for calculating molarity. Sometimes it's written as a molarity triangle, but it is simply the moles of solute over the volume of the solution. And the units are, yeah, mole per liter. Then we have the simple molecular mass triangle which is just the mass of whatever it is you're measuring over the moles of whatever you're measuring. And the answer is in grams per mole. These equations will help you solve further pH questions. I should also note that there is a difference between a strong acid and a weak acid, as well as a strong base and a weak base. It has nothing to do with their corrosiveness, causticness, or ability to dissolve things. It is about how much they disassociate when dissolved in water. Strong acids completely disassociate. Weak acids partially disassociate. The same goes for strong and weak bases. Hydrochloric acid is a traditional strong acid. When you put it in water, it completely disassociates into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Same goes for nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Both are also strong acids. Sodium hydroxide, on the other hand, is a strong base. All of it completely disassociates into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Lactic acid is a common weak acid. Only some of it disassociates into lactate when it donates a hydrogen ion, and the rest stays as lactic acid until those released hydrogen ions have been neutralized. Same goes for something like sodium bicarbonate, as it is a weak base. Only some of it disassociates. So I'll show you three ways to calculate how much of an acid or base you need to add. One way using a dry, weak acid, adding it to the liquid, which works equally well for a weak base. One way using a dry, strong base, which would work equally well for a strong acid should you decide you want to use one. And one way using a known concentration of acid or base solution. I'll set up two scenarios. One where you'll have a pH of seven and want to lower it to a pH of 4.8. And the second situation will be where you have a pH of 3 and want to raise it to a pH of 4.8. So let's go to the bench. All right, here we are at the bench. This may seem super complicated, but it's not that bad once we get into it. You'll see I have the four equations from the last video. pH from the concentration of hydrogen ions. The concentration of hydrogen ions from pH calculating molarity from moles of solute and the volume of the solution, as well as molecular mass from mass and moles. Here's our two scenarios. 19 liters of solution, dropping the pH from 7 to 4.8. I'm using lactic acid in this example. Its conjugate base will be lactate when it releases one hydrogen ion and its acid disassociation constant is 1.380 times 10 to the negative 4. So the first thing you'll want to do is calculate the amount of hydrogen ions to add if you're trying to drop the pH or neutralize if you're trying to raise the pH. If you're going from a pH of 4 point, uh, 7 to 4.8, you'll subtract 10 to the power of negative 4.8 minus 10 to the power of negative 7. That gives us 1.575 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter of hydrogen ions. And then 
for whichever weak base we decide to use, this is how many hydrogen ions you would need to neutralize. The second step is you need to create what's called an ice table. This is to help you use the acid disassociation constant formula or equation. Ka equals the concentration of the conjugate base times the concentration of the hydrogen ions over or divided by the concentration of the weak acid or weak base. So we have our three columns. This is going to be our weak acid, lactic acid. The second column is going to be our conjugate base, lactate. And the third column is our hydrogen ions. So ICE stands for initial concentration, the change in concentration, and then the concentration at equilibrium. Since we don't know what our initial concentration of the weak acid is, that's what we're trying to figure out, we give it a value of x. Initially, there will be a zero conjugate base and zero hydrogen ions because the lactic acid hasn't disassociated yet. So when we put the lactic acid into the solution, the change we want is we want it to drop by the number of hydrogen ions we want to add. 1.575 times 10 to the negative 5. That means our conjugate base and our hydrogen ion concentrations should increase by that exact same amount. Our equilibrium is then whatever that initial concentration was minus however much of the weak acid disassociated and our conjugate base and hydrogen ion concentrations will have increased by that same amount. Now, since we already know what the Ka value is for lactic acid, we can write out the, the Ka formula as such. We have our concentration of our, our conjugate base times the concentration of the hydrogen ions. And the values you use in here will be the equilibrium values, I should mention that. And then the concentration for the weak acid will be our x minus 1.5. 575 times 10 to the negative 5. And we already know the Ka value because you can just look that up. If you're not good at math, you can just rewrite this equation out in something like Wolfram Alpha and it will give you the x equals value. In this case, x equals 1.755 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter of hydrogen ions. That will drop one liter from 7 to 4.8. But we obviously have more than one liter. We have 19 liters. So what you need to do is take that concentration, you'll multiply it by the molecular mass of lactic acid, which is 90.078 grams per mole. And again, you'll multiply that by 19 liters. And this will give you your final answer. In this case, it's 30 milligrams. So you add 30 milligrams of lactic acid to 19 liters of water and your pH will drop from 7 to 4.8. Not super difficult, it's a, a bit to write out, but after a while you'll just automatically jump to here or you'll find an online calculator to do it for you. I haven't found one yet, but if I do I'll add it to the description. But the math isn't that difficult to do, especially if you want to use a tool like Wolfram Alpha. And that is dropping the pH using a dry acid or base and adding it to a liquid like a wash. So say, say there was an infection in your wash and it started driving the pH up, you could do this to drop it back down. Or you can do this with your initial wash after you've added all your ingredients to get it to the right pH. If you want to use different pH values, you just change these values here and it will change all the other values accordingly. So let's go on to the next set of math equations. Okay, so now we are talking about adding a strong base or acid to liquid to either raise or lower the pH. In this case, I'm going to use 19 liters. We're gonna be raising the pH from three to 4.8. Going to be using sodium hydroxide. It has a molecular mass of 39.9971 grams per mole. For every mole added of sodium hydroxide, will disassociate into one mole of sodium ions and one mole of hydroxide ions. And I'll, I'll get to that why that's important. So again, the first thing you need to do is calculate the amount of hydrogen ions to neutralize or add. In this case, we're going to be neutralizing 10 to the negative 3 minus 10 to the negative 
4.8 gives us 9.84 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. Pretty easy. The next step is then to calculate how much hydroxide ions do we need to add to neutralize this amount. Now, like I said before, or I should say one mole of sodium hydroxide disassociates into one mole of sodium ions and one mole of hydroxide ions, then we are adding the exact same amount of hydroxide ions as there are hydrogen ions. That said, say you wanted to drop your pH instead of raise it, and you wanted to use sulfuric acid, H2SO4, for every one mole of sulfuric acid, you actually get two hydrogen ions. So this value would need to be half as much because there would be two hydrogen ions. Anyways, then all you need to do is calculate the mass of the required amount of moles. So we need 9.84 times 10 to the negative four moles of hydroxide. We know the molecular mass of sodium hydroxide, 39.9771 grams per mole. Multiply that times 19 liters because we're putting it into 19 liters and we get 0 0.748 grams or 748 milligrams of sodium hydroxide into 19 liters of wash. Say at a pH of three, we'll raise it to a pH of 4.8. And it's, it's one of the simpler things you can do, but that's a small amount. Not as small as in the previous one where we only had 30 milligrams of lactic acid, but still a small amount. All right, so now we will go to the last set of math equations, and it was pre-making a solution, an acid or base solution, and adding that to your liquid wash or mash or whatever. All right, so the final way to adjust pH using a known concentration acid or base solution. In this example, I'm going to be using a known acid solution. We're going to be start, we're going to be using our 19 liters again. We're going to be dropping from a pH of 7 to 4.8. Going to be using lactic acid, which has a molecular mass of 90.078 grams per mole. Going to be making what is called a 0 0.01 molar solution, which would mean I need to take some amount of this to get 0 0.01 moles per liter. So we have to calculate that. Take your molecular mass, multiply it by how many moles per liter you want, and in this case it's 90.078, and we get 0 0.901 grams per liter, or 901 milligrams per liter. So if I put 901 milligrams of lactic acid into a vessel, fill it up to one liter with distilled water, I'll have a 0 0.01 molar solution of lactic acid. So then we get to the actual formula itself. At first it may seem like a simple formula, we have the concentration of the wash. In this case, our concentration would be 10 to the negative 7, because we're starting with a pH of 7. The volume of the wash, in our case 19 liters. Concentration of our acid, which is 0 0.01. The volume of the acid, we don't know that yet. That's one of the things we're calculating. And then we have the concentration of the final solution, which we want it to be pH of 4.8, so it'll be 10 to the negative 4.8. And then our final solution, which is going to be whatever the wash is plus our unknown quantity of acid. So I've written the entire thing out. We'll go through it step by step. Concentration of acid is 10 to the negative 7. Volume of wash is 19 liters. Concentration of acid, 0 0.01. Volume of acid, unknown. Concentration of final solution, 10 to the negative 4.8. Volume of final is going to be our known wash volume plus our unknown acid volume. First step will be to simplify. 10 to the negative 7 times 19 gives us 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6 plus 0 0.01 times V is 0 0.01 V. And on the other side of the equal sign, we have, I haven't simplified it yet. The next step, I simplify the other side of the equal sign. So I do 10 to the power of negative 4 times 19. And that gives us 3.011 times 10 to the negative 4. Then I did 10 to the power of negative 4 times v, which just gives us 10 to the negative 4 v. The next step, what we want to do is subtract 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6 from both sides so we can move that value from the left side of the equal sign to the right side. This is what we get here. 0.01v equals 3.011 times 10 to the negative 4 plus 10 to the negative 4.8v minus 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6. The next step is then we want to move this v value here 
from the right side of the equal sign to the left side. So it becomes 0.01v minus 10 to the power of negative 4.8v. Then we can simplify both sides. 0.01v minus 10 to the power negative 4.8v equals 9.984 times 10 to the negative 3v. And on the right side of the equal sign, 3.011 times 10 to the negative 4 minus 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6 equals 2.922 times 10 to the negative 4. Our last step will be to divide both sides by 9.984 times 10 to the negative 3 in order to remove that value from the left side and move it to the right side. And then we solve for v, and that gives us 2.927 times 10 to the negative 2 liters. That is equal to 0 0.02927 liters or 29.27 milliliters of 0 0.01 molar lactic acid in 19 liters. That will drop 19 liters from a pH of 7 to a pH of 4.8. Not hugely difficult. You could, in fact, just write this first equation out in Wolfram Alpha, and it will tell you what the value of V is. And that is if you're using lactic acid. I had done this once before. I did a bunch of notes. Here I had done it with a 0 0.5 molar concentration. And all the way down math, it comes out to 3.14499 times 10 to the negative 5. That would be equal to 31 microliters if you were to use a 0.5 molar solution instead of a 0 0.01 molar solution. 31 microliters is a difficult amount to measure out. So that's why I dropped the concentration down to 0 0.01. And that's adjusting pH. Not hugely difficult, especially if you have tools like Wolfram Alpha and you're not good with math. With these uh, three examples of how to adjust pH, you shouldn't have any problems fixing pH should an, a problem come up, and you shouldn't have trouble adjusting pH before you start fermenting in the first place. If you want to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe, and have a great week!